Okay, that was it. So this is my friend Nicole Kurtz, and we are at Con Carolinas, which is a fantasy and sci-fi convention. Right. But we're not going to talk about that, other than we both love that. Uh, Nicole is a writer and a publisher, but she is also an educator from 17 years experience in right, high school, years. correct? Yes. All right, so we're grabbing a moment to talk about young people because we both love young people. It fits the work that I do and that she has done for so many years. Yes. And she's one of the people I talked to when I was working on Great Group Reflections and Great Group Leaders. So I am asking Nicole a few questions about Reflection because that's our next book coming out. Nicole, yes, exciting. Cole, do you have a favorite reflection activity that's really worked for you in the classroom? Well, in the classroom, one of the things that kids thought, liked a lot and that I liked a lot was we asked students to reflect on their biggest blocker to their learning prior to getting started with our lesson that day. And they had to write it out as a tweet. So they're kind of confined to 124 letters, 142 characters. Um, but after they wrote their tweet, they had to meet with other students and share their tweets and the students had to reply or retweet advice or suggestions for getting over that blocker or pushing through. And so that was a way for students to share what they were thinking about or what was a hindrance to them, but also provide it, it allows students to also provide answers for other people's problems as well. So they're not only sharing, hey, this is a blocker for me, but they're also offering opportunities. And so if the student would have, we'd, we'd shuffle more than once. And so that they had a good group of suggestions for how to get through whatever was stopping their learning that morning. So I love that you did that because that's networking, they're problem solving together, mm -hmm. and our, part of what we're doing in the reflection book is emphasizing developing critical thinking mm -hmm. and uh, prompting self-discovery so they realize that they're leaders and they have answers, yep. so that's way cool. Um, what about tips? Do you have tips for how to draw out those reluctant speakers, whether that's <laughs> they're an introvert or they just want to do yes. No. <laughs> How do you pull out the responses? Well, the first thing you do is you don't ask students during the reflection piece yes or no questions. Um, I open very open-ended questions so that they have an ending. For a lot of students, they are usually shy for either language barrier issues or confidence issues. So give them that extra wait time as well. So if you're calling out students, and let them know up front. As they're coming into the class, I might say, hey, Bob, I'm going to call on you today, okay? So be ready for that. And give me like two or three answers and suggestions that we're good. And just so they know and have that heads up, they can go ahead and be prepared and it's not quite so startling when you call on them. And then you give them that wait time to formulate an answer. And that way they don't go rushed. If you do that multiple times, students, those reluctant students, will eventually become more um, willing to share. Um, and you just make that, sa that space safe. And so everything in the classroom or anything regarding students and people in general goes back to relationships. So if you build strong relationships with those students, even your quiet ones, say, hey, I know you've got good answers in there and I want to hear them. And you mean it and you show them that you mean it and you show them that it's safe for them to give that, they'll share those things with you. Final question. I know, you know, classroom time, you have a lot of stuff to get in, you have so many demands, you got to meet all this curriculum, yes. blah, blah, blah. How do you build it in? What are your tips for building in easily uh, reflection? Can you do it throughout the whole lesson plan? Yes. So one of the things we did was, or I used to do in my classroom, was reflection. We did it either at the beginning, we did it at the beginning, and we also did it at the end of class. It was part of our closing. So it's, you would ask kids, what did they learn today? It would seem very generic. We would ask them to reflect on, and I had very specific questions like, what was the one thing you're going to use when you go home tonight from the lesson? And that makes them think really about how applicable whatever we covered is to the real world. And the second thing I would do was ask them, what's the one thing that stops your learning today? Um, what's the one thing you just couldn't get? And then I would, I would give them, for my students who had trouble, I would give them suggestions or bubble, or like possible answers. Because kids can't always come up with, they know what they think, but they don't know how to say it. So even high school students. So I would give them some options. Was it this? Was it that? Was it this other thing? And eventually over time, they don't need those. They'll feel confident to go ahead and answer it the way they would. But they need the words. So that's some of the things we do. We did it in class. We did it at the beginning of class, at the end of class. And sometimes in the middle of class, after we did something really a big chunk or a very deep concept, we would play games. We would um, kind of hone and get reflections. I'd have them teach other kids, right? 
So I'll put them in groups of four and say, okay, show them how you did that. Show them how you wrote that story. Show them how you used this beginning sentence starter to, to tell your story. And so we, they would have to share lots of conversation, um, lots of sharing, and then lots of collaborative work. So there you go. A few tips from Nicole, <laughs> taking five minutes in the hallway during the con <laughs> to talk about something we're passionate about. Yes. And Great Group Reflections is coming out. It has 50 different reflection activities for a variety of learning styles, and we hope you'll check it out. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>